Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And this is Dr. Balaji Patel Kola. I work with uh, Apollo Hospitals Hyderabad in the Intervention in Radiology Department. I'll be talking about prevention and treatment of complications of endovenous microwave ablation. We all know that any procedure we do, we will have a minimal risk and minimal complication rate. So though we say that microwave ablation is superior to uh, endovenous laser or endovenous radio frequency, still we do come across few complications. And as I said, like it is very important that we discuss these minimal risk factors and complications along with our patient before we start the procedure and take a proper concern. Whether it's a small side effect or a risk or whatever, it's better that we inform the patient about all these risks. And some of these risks can be uh, uh, stopped and can be stopped from progressing into major complications if we follow a few steps. And Professor Tang has given us very beautiful presentation where we got to know how to do the procedure and to avoid all these complications, what I'm going to discuss right now. So these complications are uh, pain, ecchymosis, skin burn, infection of the ablated vein or infection at the incision of the uh, vein, paresthesia or dysthesia, deep vein thrombosis, and no death have ever been reported post-procedure. So these complications, when we are discussing, uh, we also know that we've already compared the complications when with the alternatives of endovenous microwave ablation, like endovenous laser or endovenous radio frequency ablation. The complication rate is very much less when compared to its alternatives. And even the vein closure rates are higher in microwave ablation. So we all see that, you know, uh, uh, the incidence is much less when compared to the alternatives. Coming to one of the, the complication, pain. Yes, we know that when we are ablating the vein, the vein will be getting inflamed and cause soreness and pain in the first few days. So until unless like we treat them uh, or we cover them with analgesics and anti-inflammatory drugs, this uh, pain might continue. So it's better that we cover up the patient with anti-inflammatory and analgesics is post-procedure. And prevention would be, as we know that, like Dr. Uh, Mark Whitley and Dr. Tang has told us, if you keep the wattage correct, like 40 watts and for five to seven seconds, then the prevention of the pain is very much possible. And good tumescent around the beam, we can prevent all this pain. Second complication might be infection. So infection can be at the site of the puncture or infection can be across all through the vein. So at the site of the puncture, what happens like when you are ablating and you've seen these markings on the uh, fiber that shows that, you know, you have to stop firing the catheter. If you don't stop firing the catheter, the liquefaction of the fat occurs at the incision site. It, it results into a skin burn and it can cause infection at the entry site. So it's always better that you stop firing before you remove the catheter at the end stage. And sometimes uh, these patients present with thrombophlebitis or uh, infected ulcers or cellulitis. At this acute stage, we should never do the procedure. Prime the patient for one week with IV antibiotics. And once the acute infection phase is over, then take the patient for the treatment. And you can see that sometimes the entire vein which is ablated can also go into infection. It causes uh, thrombophlebitis. So these patients, it's better, like, you know, we uh, cover up the patient with IV antibiotics. And prevention would be always like sterile equipment. We have to prep the patient properly. We have to use all the equipment sterile and do the procedure. So sometimes when you see these big uh, varicose veins, truncal varicosities or GSVs, and we treat these, and after the ablation, the blood gets trapped in these veins and they form big lumps, which will be very sensitive, which will cause a lot of uh, inflammation and pain. 
So these patients will be complaining us uh, with the swelling, uh, observing uh, the swellings and the pain. So this lump continues to enlarge in some patients. See, these patients, uh, generally they, these lumps decreases in most of the patients, but some patients, they become worsened. They start oozing out. They, they form a small pistule and they, they start oozing out. So these patients, what we do is we intervene inside. Either we do a small surgery to debulk it or otherwise, uh, intervention, we'll use a small needle ultrasound guided and debulk the clot and come out. So all these methods, uh, we can help the patient not suffering from the pain. And also like to prevent it, what we have to do is we have to use a uh, bandage and we have to advise the patient to use the compression stockings continuously. If, if the com uh, compression is taken out, these big lumps or these big uh, vessels will get the blood back into them and again form the blood clots. So thermal injury is one of the major complication what we have to discuss. Thermal injury is one of the very common uh, complication we see in almost most of the patients. So thermal injury is nothing but because of the close proximity of other structures near the vein. This uh, heat which we are using to ablate the vein is transmitted to them causing skin burn, bruising, or paresthesia. Paresthesia is one of the common uh, complications, and it occurs because of the proximity of the saphenous vein to GSV and uh, the sural vein to SSV. So that's the reason that even you have seen the in presentation of Dr. Tang, that we always puncture two centimeters below the knee joint. And if the vein or the GSV is dilated and have a reflex below, Yes, we can uh, puncture the vein near the ankle also, but always prevent it whenever it is not necessary. So you will avoid a paresthesia or injuring the saphenous one, saphenous nerve uh, nearby the GSV in the below and the lower leg. In the same way, when you are puncturing the SSV, it's always better you puncture at mid calf level. Don't go below that because the proximity of the sural now of uh, two SSV is less than five mm at the lower part of the leg. So always try to avoid whenever you don't need to puncture at the ankle level, but still, if you want to puncture or still you need to puncture, then use proper uh, uh, tumisan so that you separate uh, the saphenous now or sural now from the GSV and SSV. And we, we, all, we know that it's only thermal injury, but it's, it's not just thermal injury, but it's neurotemesis also. Ne needle stick injuries also causes uh, paresthesia. Like whenever you are entering the vein or whenever you're giving tumescent, you can injure the nerve sheath and uh, disrupt the nerves and cause paresthesia. So we should be very careful, not only while ablating, but also while entering into the vein. So if you have a high frequency probe, when you're going below uh, leg level at the ankle level and puncturing the GSV, Always try to see the nerve and try to avoid the nerve while you're puncturing the uh, vein. And as, as I said, like prevention of paresthesia would be, it's better like you try to puncture nearby the knee joint for GSV and mid-calf level and for the SSV and give a proper tumescent around the vein so that it is well separated from all the other structures and heat is not dissipated. dissipated. And even then, if paresthesia occurs, generally we give uh, pregalvin and methylcobalamin oral tablets for a month. And you can see ecchymosis. Ecchymosis also is very common. But as we discussed, like, you know, in, in uh, microwave ablation, it is less common because the temperature what we are using is very less which is only 80 degrees, but as compared to uh, RFA where we are using around 120 degrees or compared to uh, laser, we are using around 800 degrees. Over there, ecchymosis is very common, but microwave ablation we see very less, but still sometimes uh, it occurs. So prevention would be appropriate wattage. See, whenever the vein is beyond uh, 8 mm, yes, we can increase the wattage, but below 8 mm, we have to use proper as we have been advised, like 40 watts for seven seconds. And then use cold pad uh, on the skin whenever you're use, using high uh, wattage and cold fermentation after the procedure in successive days. So treatment would be, uh, it's, it's uh, self-resolving, so you need not uh, treat it and you can observe it after a few days, it will disappear. 
Deep vein thrombosis, yes, it is one of the major complication what we have to discuss. Endothermal heat induced thrombosis is very much possible and we see it in follow-up ultrasound. As we said, ultrasound follow-ups are very important and the first day, in first month, third month and sixth month, we generally follow the uh, do ultrasound examinations. But in these patients where you see this dangling thrombus from uh, GSV into the main femoral vein. So these uh, patients, we follow up regularly every three to five days so that we don't want to lose the thrombus. And we also treat these patients with low molecular weight heparin and no NOACs, which uh, rivaroxaban 20 to 30 mg per day for for a month. We don't want this thrombus to extend and form a DVT. So we treat these patients with NOACs and low, low molecular weight heparins. And uh, we follow them uh, regularly, as we said, like we follow them uh, every uh, week and see that there's no progression of the thrombus. And sometimes uh, you also see these residual varicose veins. Patients come and complain with the residual varicose veins. So it's better to make the patient stand before the procedure and mark them properly and try to cure all of them so that you don't have any uh, recurrence. And also sometimes this truncal GSV and uh, recanalization is seen because if you don't use proper wattage, if the veins are dilated, then these veins can be not ablated. And in the successive follow-up, you can see that they are recanalized. So you can follow up and you can do a re-ablation or otherwise you can do a sclerotherapy if there is no perforator which is connected. Uh, these are the complications which I've discussed. And uh, being an organizing secretary and vice president of ISVR, I invite all of you for our national conference, which is about to be held in February 2023 in Hyderabad, India. In, and the venue is such a beautiful uh, venue where all our Bollywood movies are being shot. You can come enjoy the scientific extravaganza and please, I'm inviting you all to attend this. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Balaji. Thank you very much.